Murphy, I'm sure of it. Good. Now all we've got to do is go in and get back the money you were cheated out of. Can't get over what a sucker I was. <laughs> Me, Charlie Keaton, supposed to be a smart operator falling for a crooked gambling room. Well, don't worry about it, my friend. I do. <laughs> I'll take care of everything. You sure this is the building? Positive. I left it only an hour ago. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a deserted warehouse, but the top floor is fixed up beautifully. It kind of took you beautifully, didn't it? Uh-huh. Well, what do we have to do? Walk up four flights? Well, there's an elevator right inside the door. Well, let's go. Maybe, maybe I should have gone to the police. But I'd rather go to you, Blackie. Take my word for it. I'm glad you did. I'm just itching to get into action. Are you gentlemen going up? That we are. Come on, Charlie. I'm with you. What's the party he wants here? Yeah. Top floor, gentlemen? Yes, my friend. Don't you know? Well, a lot of people are trying to rent it. Hmm? I'm sure you're lucky. I don't get this, Charlie. I don't either. Here we are, gentlemen. Top floor. Take a look around. What is this? Take a look around at what? I, I, I don't understand. Charlie! Are you sure this is the right building? Positive, and I don't understand it either. Well, who could? An hour ago, you claimed this was a lavishly furnished gambling layout. Yes. All I see is a lot of cobwebs, broken windows, and dust. I don't know. What and it couldn't happened. have been changed in an hour. I'll gamble on that. I've searched this room from top to bottom, Charlie. Not a sign of a trick stealing or walls anywhere. But I tell you, Blackie, when I was here an hour ago, this was a swank gambling den. Bars, mirrors, drapes, rugs, gaming tables, everything. And now, an hour later, it's a dim, dusty, ramshackle man. I can't understand. There are even cobwebs in the corners. Yeah, Charlie, it's hard to believe this is where you lost your $20,000. But it is, Blackie. You have to believe me. I do believe you, Charlie. I just said it was hard to believe. I find it hard to believe myself. Yeah. But I will in the morning. When the gamblers cash my check and I'm twenty thousand dollars poorer, <laughs> with your twenty million, you won't miss it very much. I could stop the check, Blackie. If you did, you'd probably stop a bullet later. Oh. Your bank is the Emmeline First National, isn't it? Well, uh, yes, that's my local bank. Then that's where the gamblers will go to cash a check. Will if I don't stop it. Don't stop it, Charlie. We'll be in that bank when they come to cash it and stop them. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Douglas, let me see that Kingston check, huh? What for, honey? Well... Just a check? That's a check for 20 grand. What? That's a better figure than the one of Venus de Silo. (laughs) I know why I put up with you, honey. You have an unconscious sense of humor. What's unconscious about it, Mr. Douglas? (laughs) You, for the most part. Here. Here's Kingston's check. Right. Hey, ain't this nice, huh? It's going to be a lot nicer after we leave it in the bank this morning. Are we going to get rid of it that soon? We're going to be at Kingston's Bank at 9 o'clock this morning and turn that $20,000 piece of paper into $20,000. Yeah, money's better than paper, ain't it? Only when it's paper money. Be on your good behavior in the bank. Oh, for 20 grand, I'll be an angel. Wings, rubs, harp, and everything. So why do you want me to behave, Mr. Douglas? Not just anybody cashes a check for 20 grand, Arnie. Now, unless we look like a pair of respectable businessmen... This check may draw a blank. Now, remember, honey. Yeah, Mr. Douglas. If this check of Kingston's isn't honored by his bank, I want you to pay him a little anti-social business. I bet you knew how it ain't no phony boy. Kingston likes living too much to give us a bum check. I will see. We're next in line. We'll soon know if Kingston has stopped payments on the check. I bet you anything. He didn't even know that he was being cheated. Shut up, you fool. Huh? Next, next. Uh, I'm next. I want you to cash this check for me, please. Yes. You just give me your identification. Of course. Oh, it's a rather large check, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, here's my identification. Thank you. I bet your weak salary on catching that big every day. What? Even when a king? Uh, quiet, honey. I uh, just sold a patent to Mr. Kingston. That's the advance payment on royalties. Oh, I see. Well, excuse me a minute. Yes, uh, but... We have to have an okay from the vice president before we cash a check as large as this, Mr. Douglas. You understand? Of course. I'll course. be right back. No worry. Bet you anything the bank hates to lose that much money at one time, huh, Mr. Douglas? Huh? <laughs> Blackie. Yes, hello. Here's the check you and Mr. Kingston are waiting for, and oh, there are the two men at my window waiting for me to cash it. You can see him from here. Charlie, come here and have a look at this check. 
And then at the two guys just beyond the teller's window. Didn't take them long to try to cash that check, did it? It seldom does. Maybe we couldn't find the gambling spot, but we found them. Now, you're positive this is the check you wanted me to watch for, Mr. King. Yes. Yes, tell us it is. Well, I, I refuse to cash it. No, no, I... you'd better cash it. I'll get the money back. Well, it's $20,000, Blackie. I know. But five minutes after those two pocket the money, it will be back in your pocketbook. <laughs> Surprise when they cash that check with no holler. Now, Mr. Douglas, someday you're going to make one bet too many, honey. Why? Hey, why did you park the car so far away from the bank? It ain't far away. It's just past the alleyway here. We ain't 50 feet from the bank. We're well, 50 feet too many. You don't seem to realize that I'm carrying $20,000 with me. Oh, I ain't forgetting that, Mr. Douglas. Be sure you I don't. I want to talk to you about that 20 grand and something else when we get back to the joint. You'll get your regular percentage. Don't worry. Neither one of you will get anything. Douglas! Who is this guy? I don't know. Is this a stick-up? Oh, I don't think so. It's Boston Blackie. What do you want, Blackie? The $20,000 you swindled from my friend Charlie Kingston. Jump the money. The two of us can handle it. Oh, yeah? Come here. Come Nice slugging, Mr. Douglas. Yeah, thanks. You put him to sleep with that one. <laughs> that Blackie ain't so tough, is he? No. Oh. All I'm hoping is that we don't find out how really tough Blackie can get. Here you are, Annie. Yeah. Uh... Your percentage of the twenty thousand we took from Kingston. Five thousand. Yeah, okay, Mister Douglas, but uh, from now on I want exactly half. Hmm? We go fifty fifty. Aren't you gaining a little too much stature for a growing boy, honey? I bet you ain't going to refuse to cut me as a full partner, Mr. Douglas. You and your bets. Why not? Oh, no, I figured out this joint of ours and how to keep her heading, how to make it disappear when we don't want nobody to find it. Ain't that true? It was the one brilliant idea you've had in all the years you've worked for me, honey. Yeah, maybe so, but it's such a hot one that I figured that I ain't working for you no more. Mm-hmm. And I helped you knock out Blackie tonight. Yeah. We're partners. Fifty-fifty, see? We are. Yeah. Why would you find anybody else who can come up with a way to make a swacky gambling joint turn into a deserted floor? Genius, Arnie. And I'll bet my life you figure it's worth cutting me in as a partner, ain't it? Arnie, you just did bet your life. And you lost. No, what? No, no. Look, Matthews, it's tough enough on me when you come in my office here and tell me you found a body. Well, but when you can't identify the body, what am I supposed to do? I don't know, but after all, I'm just a sergeant. You're the inspector. Oh, great. Well, sorry, Inspector Faraday. We just found a body in a ditch, and the identification had been removed. Mm. And there's no record on them, fingerprints or anything. Yeah, that's what I like, the simple things in life. Now, who's that? Might be the commissioner, sir. When he heard we found a body, he said he was coming down to talk to you. All right, tell him to come in. Get me my aspirin and earplugs, will you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come in, Commissioner. Oh, well, I'm not a commissioner, but I'll oh, come in. Oh, no. Anyhow, if it's all right with everybody. Oh, no, Blackie, not you. Quick, Matthews, the earplugs. Yes, sir. Uh, never mind the Matthews. I oh, have some information to plug oh. up the holes in this murder case you kids are working on. How do you even know we're on a case? I heard on my radio a description of a man who just been murdered. And I know who the man is. Yes. I mean, was. More people you know get murdered, Blackie. Unfortunately. I wonder if it's because as soon as they get to know you, they want to die. Sure, Inspector, because after meeting me, they have nothing else to look for. Yeah, Matthews, I'll take those earplugs. Sure, Inspector. Uh, that dead man is a guy named Arnie. Arnie. He worked with King Douglas, the big gambler, only Arnie doesn't live there anymore. How do you know? I didn't get this cut on my chin from shaving. Arnie and Douglas teamed up to give it to me. Only since then, apparently, Arnie's been blasted off the team. Yeah, how do you know about them? My pal Charlie Kingston was taken for 20 grand by the two of them in the most amazing gambling place I've ever heard of. What's amazing about it, Blackie? Well, Matthews, it turns from a series of swank tables and gambling equipment into a bare warehouse-looking joint, complete with dust and cobwebs. Oh, dust and cobwebs. And did it in about an hour's time last night. Are you crazy? No, Faraday, but I'm going to be. If I can't find out what makes that gambling then disappear and where it goes. Disappear where it goes. I promised Kingston I'd get his $20,000 back, too. You once promised me you wouldn't bother me, but here you are. I only came in to tell you who your corpse was before you have the bullets removed from him. Yeah. 
And now you take the lead out of the guy, and I'll take it out of my shoes. <laughs> How's the house out there tonight, Jim? Great, Mr. Douglas. There's a mob around every table. Roulette wheels are doing extra great. Good. Good of you to let me step into Arnie's shoes, Mr. Douglas. Yeah, you can stay in them too, Jim, if you don't step on my toes the way Arnie did. I ain't got ambitions to be any partner. Just a 10% cut is good enough for me. <laughs> All right. Hey, boy. Hmm? Come here to the window. What do you see down there? Boston Blackie's coming into the building. Just as he did last night with Charlie Kingston. When I should go down there and have him stop? No, let him come on up. But Mr. Douglas... I said let him come on up. But you don't want nobody to find his place. Like he was here last night, wasn't he? Yeah, Henry the elevator man said Kingston came back in about an hour and Blackie was with him. Did Blackie find us then? No. Well, how will he have any better luck finding us tonight? Yes, he will. We're here, Jim, but we can't be found. Here, but we can't be seen. Yes, you sure right. <laughs> Clever, aren't we, Jim? <laughs> Wealthy Charlie Kingston takes his friend Boston Blackie to a gambling joint on the top floor of the four-story building, where an hour before, Kingston lost $20,000 on crooked roulette wheels. The floor, however, having been occupied in years. So puzzled, Blackie later learns the identity of the gambler, tries to get Kingston's money back, but is knocked out. Still later, the gambler's chief assistant is found murdered and is identified by Blackie. As we return to our story, the telephone rings and Charlie comes to the town. Hello? Hello, Charlie. This is Blackie. Oh, yes, Blackie. Any luck in getting back that 20000 of mine? Yes, plenty of it. And all bad. I went back to that building just now, Charlie. And? And after looking all over the fourth floor, I looked at the other buildings on the block. Yes? For nothing. I know I took you to the right floor in the right building, Blackie. You have to believe me. I do believe you, Charlie. But according to what I found, the gambling den disappeared in an hour, and I can't believe that myself. Oh. Who took you to that place last night? A rather odd character named Harry Blaine. You know where he meant? In case I wanted to contact him again. That's all I need. Good. Give me the number. Sure. I'll call him when I put my finger on the dial. Take my word for it. I'll put the finger on him. Throwing lamps at night, how they catch them. I know you don't feel like this, Blaine. Do you want to talk to me now or to a doctor later? Who sent you here, Blackie? Never mind who sent me here. Gambling house, or you'll be taken to the morgue. Better go with the hospital. What about it? What if I take you there? We get off the floor, dust you off, and we'll be friends. And if I don't, I can take just so much stalling, and you can take just so much kicking around. Now figure it out for yourself. Oh. Give me a couple of minutes to get washed up. Sure. All I really wanted is for you to come clean. <laughs> Where are you going? To see Inspector Faraday. That's his office there, isn't it? Yes, but there's a no admittance sign on the door, isn't there? Yes, yes, I know, but I'm Charlie Kingston. And I'm I... Sergeant Matthews, and my job is to keep guys like Charlie Kingston from bothering the inspector. But I'm a friend of Boston Blackie, and I think Blackie's in trouble. Well, if Blackie's in trouble, he'll get out of it, and I don't think I know. So now you get out of here. Hey, what's all the noise out here? Oh, Inspector Faraday, this guy says he has to see you, and I say he doesn't. Inspector, you know me. I'm Charlie Kingston. Yeah, I know you all right. Too well, let go of him, Matthews. I'll talk to him. Maybe talk him into getting out of here. Faraday, Blackie's in trouble. It's all my fault. Yeah, every time you come to town, you cause him trouble, Kingston. Then Blackie causes trouble for me. I know, but this is more serious than ever. He's, he's gone to that place at 419 Thurber Street alone, or he's going to try to go there, force someone to take him, and I, I'm afraid you'll run into trouble. And Blackie doesn't run into trouble. Trouble runs into him. Well, it amounts to the same thing, and I appeal to you to help him. All right, I'll have him. I'll tell you what I'll do. Thank you, Inspector. What? You got him into trouble, didn't you? Yes. Well, then, I'm going to let you get him out of it. How many floors do we have to climb, Blaine? Well, uh... And why isn't the elevator? 
elevator running. Oh, Henry isn't on duty, I guess. This is the top floor. You sure? Don't think I like walking all the way up after the beating you gave me, do you? No, but I've been thinking maybe you want me to walk, so I'll be too tired to take care of myself when we get into the place. I don't think there's anyone there yet. Well, here we are. Okay, open the door. Okay. And it better be the gambling joint, too. It is. Last time I was here, it wasn't anything but an empty floor, a floor that hadn't been used for years. Well, open the door, will you? I have to open it with a key. Well, hurry up. Okay. So that okay. I don't see what I expect to see. You'll be seeing things through black eyes. Right. I said I'd bring you here, didn't I? Yes, but I've been here twice before, and there was nothing but an empty, deserted loft. Well, take a look at this. What? Hey. It's a gambling layout, just the way Charlie described it. Let's go in. Look around. Look around. I'm thinking. Oh, no, you're not taking this thing right here. Uh, show me this place. And waiting here with me till Douglas shows up. It's already here, Blackie. Right here. Well, excuse me, Douglas. Yes. Harry was thoughtful enough to call and say you were forcing him to bring you here. Oh, Jim. You let me out of your sight to clean up, Blackie. Now he tells me. Call me, Mr. Douglas. So this is Jim, eh, Douglas? That's him. I don't know which is ugly I am or his gun. He's keeping that gun on you while I convince you to stay in your own yard. That's so. Blackie, I'm going to work on you. I'm a working man myself, and I owe you a couple. You'll owe me more in a minute. Oh, okay. yeah. Plug him in, Harry. Plug him in. Go ahead, sir. Why don't you get a couple of more guys and come make it an even fight? Harry, you're a lot of help. One makes me even. Blackie really made you take him here, didn't he? Sure did. Jim. Yeah, Mr. Douglas? Blackie's unconscious. I think if you and Harry dump Blackie on the sidewalk, he'll keep away from us for good. If he could ever find us again, which I doubt... You know, it's against the law to sleep on the sidewalk. Oh, oh, oh All right, let me help you up. Okay. Uh, what are we doing here? Who knows? Your friend Kingston was afraid you'd get in trouble. So I thought I'd better come and give you a hand. You can give me a head. A new one. The one I'm using now for you for the swollen. Use your other one. It's got to be an improvement. Oh, what, what happened? Up? Well, I found Douglas the gambling spot in the building here. But Douglas and his pal found my weak spot and tossed me out. The joint is in this building? Yeah. Where? Find it now. It's on the top floor. The top floor? You told me that floor was empty. It is and it isn't. It all depends on how you look at it. How what? I'll explain later, Party. Right now, you want Douglas for murder, don't you? Sure, for killing his pal Arnie. If he killed him. Can you prove he did it? Just do what I tell you, Inspector. You and I are going to be electricians and give Douglas a real shock. How do they know we've been having trouble, Jim? They say there's trouble in the whole block because they've been looking for the causes for an hour. We're short of something. We've oh. got to look everywhere. Well, I sure hope they find it. The magnets on our roulette wheels won't work if there's trouble with the electricity. Tell them to come in. Yes, sir. Okay, you guys, you can come in. Come on, Tom. Let's look for this short in this office here first, eh? Yeah, it's always hard to find a trouble in a building as old as this. Uh, the wiring fan. Hey, Misty, this switch here control the light? Yes. Well, let's get to work. Yeah, okay. Yeah, screwdriver, Tom. Uh, um, uh, no, no. Hold it, both of you. Something phony here. Jim, your gun. I got it, boss. Right in my head. Two electricians without a screwdriver? I better take a little look at you fellas. Got an idea one of you is Boston Blackie. I know the other guy, boss. He's a homicide man. Faraday. Well, let him have it now. No, well, I'm at the light switch. Duck, Faraday! Good work, Blackie. Get back on the Take care, Take care, Douglas. <laughs> How are you doing, Faraday? Much better than I did. As an electrician. I'm doing the same, currently. You got Douglas Blackie put on the lights. I've grabbed this gym. Right, John. Why you ever get away, Cobra? Don't worry, Jim. You won't ever get away. Faraday, he's going for a knife. Oh, no, he isn't. He's going for a knife. Wow, what a clout. Thanks. Well, I guarantee Douglas has a gun, pal. Yes. Yeah. And that'll be the gun that killed Arnie, or Jim will be. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We got them both anyhow. Uh, tell me all about this big mystery floor. How it could disappear any time these characters want it. I will, Inspector. As soon as I get back Kingston's $20,000 and we drag these two characters downtown. You're not kidding. 
Then I'll show you how this top story almost had me blowing my top. Okay, Blackie, we're back again. Yep. We walked up when we were supposed to be electricians. Now we take the elevator. Sure, Harry. If you're unhappy, I'll let you off here. It's the fourth floor. No problem. See the sign? Go on, get out. Okay. See how you like the cobwebs. Wait a minute. If this is the fourth floor, it's the top floor. That's what I thought when I was here twice before. But there's an extra floor above this one. Shut the elevator door. We'll go up one more flight. Okay. You mean this floor is marked four, but it's really three? That's exactly what I mean. There's no way of telling when we were in the elevator. And Henry, the man that ran this car, was just announced that it was the top floor. When he opened the door, we just left. How do you like that? Oh, I like it fine. Come on, Inspector. Let's take a look at that lovely layout that was in. You're sure this is the top floor? Naturally. It's the gambling place. Take a look, genius. What do you see? We... Well, nothing. Even less. There isn't a piece of gambling equipment here. There's absolutely nothing but four walls. You don't say. But this has to be the place where we grabbed Douglas and Jim two hours ago, Faraday. It has to be. Got your stop, Blackie? Well, of course it has. We're in the right building. It's definitely the top floor. I can even see a, a skylight. But I can't see. This place was full of gambling equipment when we left here two hours ago. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I had all the stuff removed, stupid. We got oh. it in a police warehouse by now. Oh. Well, I'm certainly glad of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad this ends the mystery of the four floors that almost floored me. Ha, 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 ha.